general relativity, step by step. I've been looking at the dominant energy condition and I've looked at this requirement of a future pointing <laughs> future pointing causal vector. To me, CV is a control volume. That's why I uh, stuttered on this one. So now I'm going to look at this condition here. Okay, so what have I got? I've got that if U is a future pointing whatever C, causal vector, then minus T alpha beta U alpha is also a future pointing control volume. And in a minute I'm going to substitute T alpha beta equals rho zero zero P into it to see what happens for a, a two-dimensional perfect fluid. Okay, so that's V beta equals that. So we, we I'm going to have to evaluate that. Well, that, well, this one's easy. We've got this one already. That's just minus T alpha beta U alpha. This one, V, well, I'll, 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 well, I'll, I'll call it beta, equals V subscript beta, subscript beta, actually, I'm going to call it a gamma, G gamma, and then beta. So I've just lowered that index from up there to down there, which equals... Well, let's do it. Well, we've got this one here. That one there is V beta. And now this one here. So it needs to be minus T. I'll keep the dummy index there. Times gamma. Times U alpha. And then I need to lower the index with the gamma beta. Oh, and there's a minus there as well. So let's bring all this lot together. V beta V beta equals minus T alpha beta U alpha times this term here, which is again minus T alpha gamma U alpha G gamma beta. equals plus T alpha beta U alpha T alpha gamma U alpha G gamma beta. All I'm doing is copying that out. And now that is summed, I'm going to write, them, write the sums explicitly, is summed over alpha. I guess this one here shouldn't really be an alpha because I'm going to confuse it with that alpha there. What have I got left? Delta. I'll call this one delta as well. So that's going to be summed over alpha, which I've got here. Beta is summed as well, which is there. Delta is summed as well. And gamma is summed. Everything's summed. Of course it's a scalar, isn't it? Well, it's a scalar, so everything's summed. But I've got a whole bunch of restrictions, because the T I'm considering, the stress-energy tensor I'm considering, is diagonal. And of course, the, the fundamental tensor I've got as well is diagonal as well. So this tells me that alpha equals beta. This one here says gamma equals delta. This one here says beta equals gamma. So alpha equals beta, which equals gamma, which equals delta. Alpha equals beta, beta equals gamma, and gamma equals delta. Alpha equals beta equals gamma equals... Alpha equals gamma, beta equals gamma equals delta. There we go. Okay, so we know that they're all equal, all these four things are equal, but we don't know what the value is. Well, because we're summing, we've got to say over the zero and the one term there. So this term here is T, I'm just going to put zero for everything, U zero, T zero zero, U zero, G zero zero, plus, and then with ones for every, everything, one one, U one, T one one, U one, G one one. And we know what that is. That's just minus 1. And that's just plus 1. And we know what T0, 0 is. That's just rho from here. Uh, let's move a little bit from there. And T11 is just P. So this term here is rho squared U0 squared. Min uh, so it's minus that. Plus, minus from here. Plus P squared u1 squared times plus 1. There it is. 
And because it's causal, my causal restriction, which I have here, says that the dot product is zero. So u alpha u alpha is less than zero. So we know that we've got that u alpha u alpha is less than zero, which tells me that u alpha u beta g alpha beta is less than zero. So that restriction tells me that u zero squared minus u zero squared plus u one squared is less than zero, which tells me that u1 squared is less than u0 squared. Well, we kind of knew that. We kind of knew that. What am I doing here? What am I doing? I'm evaluating this. I'm seeing if this vector here is causal or not. So I want, I want that. I want this thing to be negative. Well, I'm asserting it's negative. I know that that's negative by the dominant energy condition. And this is by the future pointing causal vector nature of U. Okay. And everything's positive here. So U1 squared is less than U0 squared. So I'm just going to say that uh, U0 squared equals U1 squared plus epsilon, where epsilon is positive. Okay, oops. So now I can use this condition here. It's quite deep. The dominant energy condition has got quite a lot of meat on it. So that's minus rho squared times u0 squared plus epsilon plus p squared u1 squared. Now I'm substituting for u0 squared, so that should be u1 squared has got to be less than zero. The dominant energy condition gives me that. So that says that u1 squared times minus rho squared plus p squared has got to be less than, taking this one on the other side, epsilon rho squared. For all epsilon. Because I don't know how small that epsilon can be. I've got to be prepared or the dominant energy condition requires this thing here to be less than zero for any value of epsilon. So that tells me that u1 squared minus rho squared plus p squared has got to be less than zero, because epsilon can be any value you like, any positive value you like. It could be 10 to the minus a Google. So um, we know that that's positive, so that tells me that minus rho squared plus p squared has got to be less than zero, or p squared has got to be less than rho squared, which says that mod p has got to be less than rho, because we know already that rho has got to be greater than zero. Well, that's quite a nice little piece of reasoning. Let me go through that whole stream of reasoning again. I've got the stress energy tensor for a perfect fluid, and now I've determined that the modulus of p must be less than rho. The dominant energy condition implies that the modulus of P has got to be less than rho. Because of all this stuff here. Isn't that nice? I'm going to stop there. Stop, stop, stop.